Have you ever had a movie where you just, you want to love it more than you actually do? That's me with The Bad Guys 2022. And you might hear me say that and look at the title of the video and think, Daniel, what are you talking about? If you don't love this movie, then why do you want another one so bad? Let me explain. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about and you just clicked on the video for something to spend your time on, The Bad Guys is a movie from DreamWorks Animation that came out in April of 2022. Yes, I know, 10 months ago. My production cycle is very slow. The film was written by Eaton Cohen, writer of Idiocracy and Tropic Thunder and some other movies I don't want to talk about. <laughs> Directing The Bad Guys is Pierre Parafel, a French animator who's been working at DreamWorks since 2008. This movie marks his feature film directing debut, and this movie is really, really good. Sometimes. So it follows this group of animals who live in an otherwise human world, and they're bad guys. They like to rob banks and steal things and be an overall nuisance. And one day they decide to steal this goodness award to prove that they are super bad guys. But then they get caught. So the leader of the bad guys, the big bad wolf, negotiates a deal for them. If they go to goodness counseling, then they won't face jail time. But secretly, they plan to only pretend to be good, but actually stay bad, so that the bad guys will appear to become the good guys, but they'll actually remain the bad guys in secret. But then Wolf decides maybe he does want to become good. And so the rest of the bad guys feel betrayed that he wants to become a good guy instead of staying a bad guy. So that's the general plot of the movie. And yeah, it does come across as a bit juvenile. In fact, I think the plot is the movie's weakest aspect. It's very standard, very predictable. As early as the first teaser, I saw this guy and thought to myself, Oh yeah, you're gonna be the twist villain, aren't you? And sure enough, what do you know? He's the real bad guy of the bad guys. What a shock. But here's the thing, there's also parts of the story that are really good. And there are characters that are really good. In fact, let me show you the very first scene of this movie, which shows off all of its best elements. I can taste air. Air? Yes, air. Mmm. Nice. I don't know. First of all, I love this dialogue. It feels sharp, it feels natural, and it establishes that these characters are very good friends in a way that doesn't feel expository. We get an idea of what the personalities are like. And then with the visuals, we have a double whammy of great character design and great character animation. Notice Wolf's clean-cut yet casual figure versus Snake's sloppier dress and posture. Notice Wolf's smoother motions contrasted with Snake's quick, sharp motions. And that's not to mention the background characters. In two minutes, we know who these people are, their relationship to each other, and their relationship to the world around them. And it's accomplished in a way that's breezy, funny, and entertaining. This is a masterclass of a scene. And then three minutes later, the fish farts in the car. Not to say the other characters in The Bad Guys are bad. I think Mr. Shark has both a nice energy and a hilarious running gag with his obviously bad disguises inexplicably working. Then, um, I don't know, the piranha, he, he's a good fighter. I mean, I mean, a bad fighter. He's good at fighting, but he's a bad guy. And he also farts a lot. And Miss Tarantula is also here. Yeah. Now, outside the group, you again have a mixed bag of characters. The chief of police who keeps coming after them is a lot of fun, making it feel like almost a game between her and the bad guys. Diane Foxington's dual life, trying to put a criminal past behind her, is pretty interesting. In fact, besides Wolf and Snake, I think Wolf and Diane share the best scenes in the movie. And then there's Professor I'm Not the Villain, who again, turns out to be the villain. I guess because he wants money or something? I don't know, like, his tidal wave of mind-controlled guinea pigs feel like it could be used for something with a little more oomph. At least have him try to take over the world or something. Speaking of, the world building also has its own hiccups. And I'm not talking about there being both humans and anthropomorphic animals in this world, that's fine. We don't need an explanation detailing the history of this world's evolution and the demographics of animal versus human populations. It's a very cartoony movie, the tone lets it get away with stuff like that more easily. What it can't get away with is the movie casually dropping, oh by the way, a meteor also hit the city a year ago and thousands of people died. Like, Holy shit, this is a 9-11 scale traumatic event and it's just dropped on us. And then they put the meteorite on a pedestal like a statue, why? I feel like I can't talk about any aspect of this movie other than the routinely excellent animation without running into both good and bad examples. The humor in this movie can be really funny. Snake features tons of great visual gags. I love his scrunkly little fake arms. I mean, just look at him. And then when he's arrested, they don't know where to put the handcuffs, so they're just clapped onto his body. That's great. There's a lot of witty moments. There's a lot of wacky moments. And then the fish will fart again. So why am I making this video begging for a sequel to a movie I just kind of like sometimes? Is it just because Mr. Wolf is hot? No, of course not. 
I mean, he is, but that's not the point. What I'm saying is that baked in here are all the pieces needed to make a truly amazing animated film. How do I know that? Because they've already done it. Shortly after the release of The Bad Guys, DreamWorks put out the Maraschino Ruby, which features the bad guys pulling a quick caper all to get the police chief to retract a mean thing she said about them in the paper. It's a hilariously petty motivation that fits for a fun, snappy story. And the fish doesn't even fart in it. The Bad Guys feels split between wanting to be a movie that all ages can enjoy and a movie made only for babies. But I do believe that if you assemble all of its elements again just slightly differently, you can make something very, very good. And that's why I want all these elements assembled again, because it would be perfectly set up to be exceptional. I just implore DreamWorks to have confidence in this premise. It can be very entertaining and clever without needing to pander to the lowest common denominator. The bad guys is teetering right on the edge of being something truly great. So let it be great. At the moment, there's a holiday special being made, but no sequel has been confirmed. This is my message to DreamWorks. Give us the bad guys too. Badder guys. Give the people, or at least give me, what we want. I mean, the first one made money, right? Make it happen. Please. Hashtag, make the bad guys too. Cut.